Dr. Yoni Witten here, and this week we're going over one simple strategy that you can use to help preserve the health and longevity of your hips and spine. Let's get into this. There's simply no denying that people nowadays are spending more time in flexion-based positions like the one you see me in here than at any point in the history of our species. And the problem is, because we're adaptive in nature, what we do repeatedly, we get really good at. So you can actually think of this position, that is a position where your knees are bent, your hips are flexed, the normal curve is pulled out of your spine, your head is down and your arms are out in front of you as a form of training. And just like weightlifting, when you do it repeatedly, your body changes to make you more efficient and better at that activity, your body actually changes to make you better at sitting. Two of the most common changes that we find in people who spend a lot of time in flexion are a reduction, loss, or reversal of the normal curves in the spine most evident in the neck and the lower back. You'll often see that forward head position or a flat lower back curve in people who spend a lot of time sitting. And as that happens, you'll also see a shortening and tightening of the muscles that run across the front of your hip. Those muscles are collectively known as the hip flexors. I've never before seen data that actually documents the changes of people spending decades in this position. Until I just found this study put out by the CDC that documents what they call normal ranges of motion across different age groups. And what we can see from looking at this chart is really incredible. In the six plus decades from age two to eight to 69 years old, there's a loss of only three to 7% of our ability to bring our hips into flexion. Because we've been doing that activity over all those years, we retain it and we stay really good at it. While in the same time period, our ability to extend our hips, to take our hip in the opposite direction, suffers greatly. In those same six plus decades, we lose somewhere between 39 and 64% of our ability to extend our hips. Why? Because we're not using that motion. We're not taking our hip in the opposite direction. Now the problem with that is, is that some of those large powerful hip flexors actually attach to your spine. And when they get short and tight like that, they compress your spinal joints, your discs, and your hips. And that sets you up for pain, dysfunction, and premature degeneration in all of those joints. There are a lot of things that you can be doing to improve your hip extension. One of the first things that I would recommend is decreasing the amount of time that you spend in flexion-based positions and or modifying your sitting position. Now, if you haven't already seen my video titled The Best Sitting Position, make sure to check that out. That's a great place to start. I'm gonna drop a link in the description down below. But what I wanna go over today is a highly targeted strategy that can help you to open up those muscles on the front side of your hips. To really target those hip flexors and get the most effective stretch into hip extension, here's what you need to do. You'll start off with a stance that is hip width apart. From there, you're gonna stagger your feet so that one foot is significantly out in front of the other. Now, the length of your stance is going to be dictated by how flexible your hips are going into this. So if this position looks too advanced for you or feels like too much of a stretch, go ahead and feel free to take a shorter stance. If that's way too easy, take a longer stance. Perfectly acceptable for your rear heel to be coming up off the floor, but you need to make sure that both your feet are pointing straight ahead. Everything's going in the same direction. Okay. Now we need to understand what the hip flexor does. The hip flexor actually shortens the distance or closes the gap from the leg to the torso. So in order to get into hip extension, we need to open that angle. We need the leg bone going backward in relation to the torso. So one of the big mistakes that I'll see when people are trying to stretch their hip flexors is they'll get into a stance like this and then they'll lean forward. Well, look at what I've done here. I've put my leg bone directly in line with my torso. So essentially I'm at zero degrees here, no different than if I was just standing up. What we need is that leg bone going backward in relationship to the torso. So once you're in your split stance here, it's really important that you maintain an upright torso. Both feet again, pointing in the same direction, straight out in front of us. Now here's the really critical thing when you're targeting that hip flexor. First, 
you want to imagine like you're wearing a belt buckle and you want to rotate your hips so that that belt buckle is facing straight ahead at the wall in front of you. That's going to start your pelvis into a neutral position. Second, you want to make sure that you engage your butt muscles and your abdominal stabilizers and curl your rear end underneath you, forcing your pelvis into a neutral position. So watch what happens when I'm here and I have a floppy core and my glutes are relaxed. My lower back is actually hyperextended, meaning my spine is closer to my femur. Again, putting me in this position, taking stretch off of my hip flexor. So belt buckle facing straight ahead. You're already going to feel a stretch on that hip flexor by doing that. Then I'm going to engage my glutes, engage my abdominal stabilizers and watch my lower back straighten out and watch my butt curl underneath me. Now my hip flexors are getting a very intense stretch. And you're going to hold that stretch for 45 to 60 seconds. Once you finish that, you'll switch over to the other side and repeat. In 2018, the International Journal of Sports Medicine put out an awesome study that let us know exactly how much we need to stretch a muscle to get the lengthening results that we're after. And what they found is that the optimal amount was a minute a day for each muscle group that you're working on five to six times a week. And that's what we're shooting for here. One minute on each side, five to six times a week. And that's going to help open up those hip flexors and keep them open for a lifetime. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you'll put the information to good use. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and toggle notifications to all to get notified about the new videos that come out every single week. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to like this video and drop a comment down below if you have any questions or videos that you'd like to see in the future. That's all for now. See you next time.